the sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your songs again. Whatever who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Please be seated. We are joined here today because a special person to many people, a dearly loved sister, wife, mother, granny, not grandmother, granny, aunt, gr a great friend, a traveling companion, someone whose life means a great deal to each person here. Dear friends, we are gathered here today because our friend Kathy has died. And as we gather today as friends and as family, we gather here with a heaviness in our hearts because of the great love that we have for her. Not had, we still have it. It is still resting in our hearts. It is still living. 
It is still very present in our lives because how she has touched our lives will never be taken away, will never be absent. It will always be with us. As we come today, let us remember the promises that God has given to us, promises that have been realized through people much like ourselves, through times very similar to ourselves. The prophet Jeremiah writes, this is on the front, the verses before this are reminding us that he was going through a time where it was very difficult, where there is sadness, where there is suffering. But he writes these words, but this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So dear friends, we are united here today by a common sorrow, a common affection, and a common hope. We have come together to give thanks for the life of Catherine, Kathy, to remember the ways that her life has touched ours, and to entrust her into the merciful keeping of our loving God. We have come also to share the sorrow of those who mourn, and to offer them our love and support. We are here to bear witness to our hope in Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the hope. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. With faith in Christ, let us lift our hearts to God, that the Lord may bless us with strength, with comfort, and with peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we open our lives to you. Lives broken, confused, saddened, you know all about us. You know our heart's desires, you know our struggles, you know our pains and our sorrows that we feel. Lord, we pray that you would speak to us today the words we cannot speak to ourselves, words of courage, of hope, of healing, that you alone can give through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we come to you on this sacred time because each life is sacred to you. Lord, we hold the gift of life in our hearts, the gift that you have given to us. Lord, as we come with memories of joy, we come in this time of sadness, time where there feels like an emptiness in our lives, time when we need your hope, your immense love to surround us and comfort us. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite us to join together as we say or pray the Lord's Prayer. It is written in your bulletin. I also recognize that there are a few different ways of saying this prayer. Pray it as you feel most comfortable. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Our next, our, our first hymn that we'll all sing together is In Christ Alone. We come on this day with great sadness in our hearts, but we also come with the hope that we've talked about already, the hope that Jesus Christ has given to us, that while this is an end, it is not the end that we have hope in Jesus Christ, who has overcome sin, who has overcome death. And Jesus promised his disciples and promised each of us to make a place for us in his Father's house. So as we join together, let us join together in the hope that Christ has given to us. Let us join singing in Christ alone. You may remain seated. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still. When striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, his gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns and calls me home. At this time, I'd like to invite Spencer to come forward to read Psalm 23. Whichever. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
Thank you, Spencer. At this time, I'd like to invite Barb to come forward, either to the lectern or up here, uh, to share the eulogy. Good morning. Heaven is a lucky place today. On behalf of the family, I want to thank you all for coming to celebrate the life of one remarkable wife of Laherty, mom of Jeff and Chris, sister to many, aunt to many, and neighbor and friend to all. I wanted to introduce kids and grandkids just to point out who's who, and it helps seal my, in my memory who everybody is. So Jeff and Chris, would you stand up, and Mr. Chris? Chris and Mr. Chris's kids are Drew and Claire. Sorry, you gotta sit. <laughs> then comes Erica and Wayne, and all their boys. Russell, Spencer, Troy, Quinn, and Jordy. Pam and Darren. Can't even see where they are. There, hi Pam. <laughs> Daphne, Clayton, and Jasper. These were the loves of her life. And she treasured every moment with you. Thanks for standing. And Braden, oh, Braden, stand up. Sorry, passed right by you on the list. My name is Barbara McFarlane. I have had the honor of being Kathy's friend for, I think, 54 years. I first saw her when I was 11 years old, and I thought she was the most beautiful waif with these great big eyes and long eyelashes, and she was everything feminine that I ever wanted to be and never would be. But um, she, was, she was introducing me in the last few weeks especially as this is Barb my best friend she's a retired nurse like you she'd tell all the nurses when Laird and Kathy got married Will and I stood up with them as their best man and matron of honor it was our honor to do so um, when you choose your friends in life the old adage to choose people who you admire who who teach you things, who are better than you, who you will learn from. And she was that to all of us. A wonderful teacher and friend. So most of these words are Jeff, Chris, and Laird's, with a few interjected by me. We're here to celebrate Catherine, this incredible woman. Whoever coined the phrase, big things come in small packages, must have known Kathy. At a mighty five feet one inch and 110 pounds dripping wet, she was a star athlete in high school, a damn good softball player in adulthood, but most of all, she had a heart that was bigger than life. Her kind, gentle, caring manner was known and experienced by many, and had even her earned her the nickname of St. Catherine. Now, I had to clarify with that, that with Jeff, because I don't think I'd ever heard her called St. Catherine. Because the friend I knew, she had this delicious sense of humor, and it would pop up when you least expect it. And I'll never forget a Lions dinner. Every, we'd have an annual Christmas dinner and my late husband would always play Santa. And one by one, we'd all go up to get our gift and sit on Santa's knee. And when it came Kathy's turn, she'd been sitting beside me and she got up and she got this gleam in her eye and she made eye contact with, with Will, Santa, and she just took a running leap straddled his lap and was on that, just like Miley Cyrus and the wrecking ball. She just <laughs> broke the whole room up. 
but she was wonderful and spontaneous. Loved her to pieces. Okay. So, the St. Catherine apparently came from her sisters, her most wonderful sisters and nieces, I do believe. I've seen the extraordinary love that her family has had for her, the constant meals and care. It's a very special. She, Kathy had a stubbornness and a fight in her that was admired by many and carried her throughout these last years. She never complained and always had a positive outlook despite her diagnosis. Even Tuesday of last week, I was sitting with her in Hamilton and she was planning her spring gardens. She was in it for the fight and she wasn't ready to go. She wanted to stay. Many of us are aware and experience firsthand the passion and love that she had for her family and friends. She adored Lairdy and all of her grandchildren. Her commitment to giving to those less fortunate in Nicaragua and El Salvador a chance at a better life is well documented through her 15 trips there, as you may have seen from the photos of the funeral home, and a true testament to her selfless carrier, character and genuine interest in doing what was good and meaningful for others who needed a hand up. Her generosity was endless. Kathy took every opportunity to purchase gifts for someone else even if it wasn't needed for six months. She often bought gifts just to have. And I remember when Lisa and Laura's, Lisa's kids were little, and before Christmas, every week, for four weeks, she'd send you a gift in the mail, and it just made your Christmas. I always thought that was special. So, I've got to just get my place here. So she was in the gift shop at Hamilton General just last week, shopping and buying. She didn't leave without purchasing something. Now St. Catherine always had her vices. Mainly, it was a small double-double, a honey cruller donut, and A&W poutine, but they had to be extra crispy fries, extra gravy, vinegar, salt, pepper on the side, and usually an extra fork for whoever was with her. She also liked A&W hash browns because they were extra crispy. She was a relentless hand washer and anyone getting more than five steps into her home was quickly questioned with a, did you wash your hands? It'd be just like that. COVID co coincided with her diagnosis and she was vigilant. Kathy loved her gardens, flowers, and drives through the countryside to various gardens and markets. Her and I had many adventures over the years doing just that, and we really treasured these last two years, every, every adventure we had. Back in the day, we thought we were badass hellcats, but we were, ended up being Miss Daisy driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> two little old ladies getting lost and having fun. She loved to fill her deck with all kinds of flowers and greenery. Sometimes she didn't have enough for pots, for all the flats that she had. Spring was a particular favorite time of year as she watched the blossom emerge, blossoms emerge from the earth and everything that was brown turned to green. After spring arrived and her flowers were in bloom, she would look forward to the first week of July when all the kids would come for sports camp. She would be busy making food, washing sports camp t-shirts, making sure all the kids washed their feet, trying to control 17 to 22 kids and leaders, all of whom stayed at their house for the week with something Kathy would sign up for and love every second of it. She was an avid Leafs fan, Jays, curling, figure skating, and Olympics fan who loved to cheer on her favorite players and have the odd squabble with Laird on where his allegiances should lie, particularly when it came to the Leafs. We can all take great comfort in knowing that she now has a front row seat to any sports event that she wants to watch and is cheering on both the Leafs and the Jays. 
Kathy was also an avid royal watcher interested in the events in and around Buckingham Palace. Now, Queen Elizabeth is in very good company with St. Catherine, and I'm sure Kathy's mom's right there with them at the table. They'll be sitting down to afternoon tea, surrounded by beautiful gardens, flowers and sunshine, and others who have gone before. Darren, her parents, cherished aunts and close friends are now all reunited and enjoying the peace, warmth, love and joy that heaven has to offer. Another favorite place of Kathy's was in the kitchen. She loved to make jam, her famous icicle pickles, and always had a batch of chocolate chip cookies for the grandkids. She was always the first one in the kitchen and the last one out. She always made sure everyone had lots to eat and would throw an extra scoop of mashed potatoes on your plate just to make sure you had enough before making her own plate. You could often find shopping ingredients listed on her counter for sandwiches and food that was needed at the current funeral taking place at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. Kathy loved the quilting bees and the United Church ladies. She was a talented seamstress and loved to make quilts and pillows for her family. She was always up for the challenge to fix or alter anything that needed sewing. Kathy loved her iPad and you could hear, would hear the grandkids and kids groan every time she got it out to take pictures. She would gather the kids and attempt to have all 10 of them sit still, smile, move over, oh, just one more. She has 2,500 pictures on her iPad and we are truly grateful for her passion to capture those memories as we have reminisced over the past few days with lots of love, laughs, and tears. The family would sincerely like to thank the many friends, family members, neighbors, and medical staff who have showed endless compassion and love for Kathy and Laird over the last couple years in particular, whether it be dropping off food, drives to appointments, thank you Brenda, Kay, and Wendy, or just the phone calls of support and encouragement. Without your prayers and friendship, this journey would have been much more difficult. I would like to now ask all the grandchildren, Drew, Claire, Russell, Spencer, Troy, Quinn, Jordy, Daphne, Clayton, and Jasper to come forward and share some memories of their granny. Uh, before we get started, has everyone washed their hands? <laughs> we want to thank Barb for sharing so many memories of Granny today and for being a best friend to her. We thought it would be appropriate to share our favorite or funniest memories with Granny or at Granny's house. I think we can all agree that no house or backyard will ever compare to theirs when it comes to si time spent together at sports camp and our favorite outdoor game. But more specifically, each grandchild was able to reminisce about their own special memories so that we could share them with you all today. So some of my favorite memories about Granny were her walking us home from sports camp every day. So there would be all of us, and then usually we'd pick up a few other kids along the way. So there would be 15 or 20 kids she'd be walking home, which is pretty impressive. And uh, we weren't always the best behaved, obviously. So <laughs> she'd be yelling at us get back here, stop running away, stop hitting your brother. <laughs> but, but she'd never really be mad. It was more like, smarten up or you're not going to freeze you when you get home. <laughs> but when we got home, she would always give us all the freezy and we'd sit on the, the porch and all would be good. And those were some of my favorite memories, just sitting there playing games with Granny and Grandpa. And Grandpa Sports Camp, don't get me wrong, it was always fun, but... I think what we looked forward to the most that week was 
spending it with you guys. One of my favorite memories with Granny was um, ever since I started school, uh, she always said that she was going to be my first customer. Even when people thought that uh, was a little bit of a questionable decision, um, she always insisted. And then, sure enough, last summer, uh, I got to take her and Grandpa up, and they were my first customers. And I just remember looking back at Granny uh, when we were in the air in the back seat, just a big smile on her face. And I was just happy that um, I could do something for them after everything that they had done for me. So when Drew and I were asked our favorite or funniest moment with Granny, we both immediately thought of the same story. So one day, Drew and I were out shopping with Granny. We had stopped at the Walmart in Fergus. So Granny pulled up to the median and parked the car. We did our shopping, which we all know she loved and was usually rather lengthy. We headed back out to the car and buckled up. Now remember how I said she pulled up to the median? Well, Granny forgot it was there. <laughs> She goes forward right up on the median. Instead of reversing, she launched right over it. <laughs> Drew and I were laughing hysterically, and Granny just let out a little giggle like she'd almost done it before. <laughs> Drew and I are going to dearly miss those laughs with Granny. Uh, my favorite memory of Granny were our annual back to school shopping trips. Um, with her and Claire and I. She would call herself our Uber driver and take us anywhere we wanted to go, which never included back to school shopping. It was always the mall or Michael's or wherever else we decided to go. Um, we never bought anything that we ever needed, but it was our day with Granny, so anything goes, nothing was off limits. I will always miss her love and sense of humor that were so evident on those days and every day. At every family event, Granny would always make the same dessert, angel cake with a lot of strawberry sauce and whipped cream. And I wasn't the biggest fan of angel cake, but I loved the strawberry sauce. <laughs> so I would take a big bowl of it and cover it in whipped cream every time. And I always remember Granny would always tease me for that every single time I did it. One of my favorite memories with Granny was uh, sitting on the front porch and playing games and uh, played Jenga with the big building blocks and she would never play with us, well she would, but she was always the most excited whether she was playing or not. <laughs> Teasing us all when it fell over, or yelling and screaming and laughing and that was just so much fun. My favorite memory of Granny was when we were in Rome and we had just gotten off a long tour bus ride and Granny decided to go into a souvenir shop to get sweaters for all the grandchildren. But I had to pee really bad. <laughs> so there I was dancing around the souvenir shop being Granny's sweatshirt model while she took her time to pick out the perfect sweater for each grandchild. She loved us so much she wanted us all to have the sweaters that suited us, no matter the cost of my bladder. <laughs> so, one of my favorite memories about Granny was when us kids would play mini sticks in the upstairs hallway. And me and Jasper and Clayton used to think it was a good idea to drop the mini sticks and balls down the laundry chute. <laughs> and then we'd sneak downstairs and see if Granny would notice. And of course, there was Granny holding the mini sticks. <laughs> And then she'd give us heck, but the kind of heck that Granny would give you with a smirk on her face, you could tell that she wasn't too mad. <laughs> yeah, we we'll miss you, Granny. Um, Jasper's favorite memory of Granny will always be how she made sure that we all had sunscreen, and she would do the sniff test every morning. <laughs> um, a water bottle, which all filled the freezer the night before and a clean shirt for camp every morning. Because um, immediately after we ate our freezies, we all had to change our shirts and throw them in the washing machine so that we could all have nice shirts. Um, just because she always wanted the best for us.
Your granny was a wonderful woman who did each and every one of those things and so much more. I was, I was amazed. I was just thinking as you were talking about walking home from sports camp. I'm pretty sure that was over the, ra the recommended ratio, but... <laughs> And I was surprised that this was a second last, don't hit your brother. <laughs> and it was only once. <laughs> it's, there are a lot of great memories. Um, I'm gonna switch over mics. There we go. There are a lot of great memories uh, of just being on that back porch. As you mentioned, Jenga, um, Freezies. Every so often there'd be hamburgers or hot dogs. There'd be those little Dutch cookies. There'd be lemonade. There's a great deal of time spent there. And it didn't matter who you were, you were always welcome. At this time, I'd like to invite Pastor Melvin to come and say a few words. Hello, thanks for coming. And we don't know really what happened in the life. But last night thinking about this opportunity, came to see what happened. We are trying every day to find treasures in the life. And we don't know what happened every day when some opportunities we got it, a treasure. And I remember when one day I was having an amazing opportunity in my life to be on a mission trip to Nicaragua. I am from El Salvador. But for any reason, God said, okay, Melvin, go to Nicaragua. But never imagine a special treasure was waiting for me there. And three things, three things used for that special date in Nicaragua. Number one, Jesus. Jesus is waiting for us there. Number two, kids, children. Families, people. And number three, sports. And you know, the expectation is a big one. But through Jesus, through kids and people, and through sports, I have a three story in my heart. The name is Kati. Is mom. I lost my mom maybe seven or eight years ago. My wife killed me right now. But God used a special woman like used with you because you know. You can found a special treasure in your life, and it's for that we are here. Because in the life, a big value is came to find our treasures, special treasures, God sent to every day for us. And now, Esther, wash my hands. <laughs> the next thing. The next voice can hear is Melvin, change your face. <laughs> and now, now I know we are celebrating the big 
do for the life. Mom is at home, and God have to her in his arms, and now they are so happy because we are celebrating the life together because Jesus lived, a mom is living also in his kingdom, and not only there, she's still in our hearts. Everyone is really, 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 really a champion in the life. I am a champion because I have my special treasure. And not only Kati. When I can touch Kati, I can find more treasures. An amazing man, an amazing family, an amazing church, a big pastor, a lovely community. I love Arthur. And when I come back here, God permit that all the time, I know Kathy still here waiting for everyone. Thank for coming. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Melvin. You can see and hear in your voice and in the many pictures that were shared and the times that you, many times that you came up for whether it was sports camp or for visits, the love that Kathy had for you also. At this time, as we are just past the Easter season, and when we remembered the, the death, but also the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we joined together in singing Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun and i came down from heaven and i danced on the earth at bethlehem i had my birth dance then wherever you may be i am the lord of the dance and i'll lead you all I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John, they came with me and the dance went on. Then I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me on high. They left me there on a cross to die. Dance in wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. On a Friday when the sky turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and they thought I'd gone But I am the dance and I still go on Dance in wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said I'll 
At this time, I'd like to invite Russell and Jordy to come forward for the scripture readings. So this scripture reading comes from Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 31 to 39. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can stand against us? He, he, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, among, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God hath chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Jesus Christ who died. More than that, who was raised to life. Is at, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any power, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It does not protect for it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Thank you, Russell and Jordy. If you're afraid that I was going to get Stand back behind the flowers away from everyone. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your words of hope, for your words of life, for the reassurance that you have given us through your life, through your death, through your resurrection. Lord, as we come today, we come knowing that you are our hope. You are faithful to watch over us in life, in death, in life beyond death. You are faithful to walk with us through times of struggle, through times of joy, 
through times of crying, through times of laughter. You are faithful to be with us, no matter where we are, whether we are here in Arthur, in El Salvador or Nicaragua, in Rome, wherever you lead us, you are there with us. We are never alone. Lord, we thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things when we come to a day like today, or a few times in our lives where we do struggle, where we come with sadness and hurt, where we come with the wondering of why, why did it have to be now or like this? One of the big questions that comes up is, where are you, God? The reality is, God never leaves us or forsakes us. God did not promise a life that was easy. He did not promise a smooth road. He did not promise that everything would always be the way we wanted it. But Jesus did promise to never leave us or forsake us. The scripture readings that we had just read, both from Romans and Corinthians, talk about God's great love. A love that does not condemn us, but actually brings us hope. Does not leave us out when we are hurting the most, but invites us to come in and find rest. Paul reminds us he says these, I'm repeating from First Corinthians. These are words that have a great deal of meaning to myself. And I am convinced it's not about a question. It's not about any doubt. He says, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons or rulers, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or earth below. Indeed, nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. If God is with us, if Jesus is with us each and every day in this life, and he has promised to make a place for us in heaven, we are in his care. No matter what's going on, no matter how heavy our hearts are, no matter how at times we feel lost, Christ is there with us. Sometimes we do struggle. Sometimes we don't know which way to go. Christ is always listening. Psalm 21 reminds us that he neither slumbers nor sleeps. It reminds us that no matter what we face, we don't face it alone. Psalm 21 reminds us that he is with us throughout the days and the nights. He watches over us now forevermore. And it is in this comfort that we come, trusting Kathy to his care. I remember my first time here. I've told this story a few times. Some of you are probably tired of hearing it. My wife's probably told this story a couple times too. When I came to preach for the call, the one night, or the one morning, or when we came, there was water flowing down the stairs. The next night, the dehumidifier, or the, later on that day, the, dehumidifier, it, this, the plug for the dehumidifier was smoking. 
One might think that those would be key signs that I probably shouldn't be here. After I stood up here, preached the sermon, went downstairs, we had brought our two twins, Peyton and Reagan. We were left downstairs while the congregation was up here. Kathy either took one or both. They both ended up up here. They, I don't know if they voted or not, but they're just the babies. Just to make sure. And the fun thing was is that they have become young women. And Kathy has been a great influence. And that has been a blessing. Jeff and Chris, the last few days I've gotten to see how you, your mom has influenced both of you. Not just in your looks, because you can definitely see a resemblance, but in a care and a welcoming, a loving, the joy of being around, and care that is immense and important in life and in family. Laird, I know it has always been a blessing to know that the door has always been open. That stopping by to see you and Kathy, for some it was a fun place. There's a few of you here. I don't know, did you tell your mom and dad everything? <laughs> I'm just starting to hear stories from my own kids. <laughs> but it was a safe place to go. That it didn't matter what was going on. It didn't matter what, was, what the struggles were. You could go and there was always a cup of tea or coffee. There was always goodies. And some healthy stuff too, don't get me wrong. The thing I remember most is how important family is. There'd be rushing home from church. There was a couple comments before church, don't speak too long. Got a turkey in the oven. I think she was just joking. Maybe. But, every, but all the pictures I've seen, family, friends, co-workers, I don't know how many times people have had to, had to stop by her house. Can we get this form <laughs> when she was working up the township? She will be dearly missed. But here's the other thing I know. Because I look around and I see a great deal of love that is still in this building that still runs true in your hearts. There is lessons to be shared. There are smirks to be shared too. There is hope to be shared. Because when you are together, you experience that strength, that love. And here's another interesting story. I'm, I, was, I was told that there's not many people that could call her stubborn. One of my last memories of Kathy was calling her stubborn and everyone laughing. I like to call it strong-willed usually, but that strength has carried on and done a great deal. And my friends, as we think about what will come, there will be a time of sadness, there will be grief, I know there's already been a lot of tears. There will be no tears every so often. Don't be afraid to cry. Don't be afraid to allow that love that lives in your heart to be expressed. She means a lot. But here's the other thing. Don't be afraid to live. Don't be afraid to experience the joy of creativity, of learning new things, of sharing the lessons that have been taught, 
of sharing stories, because there's a lot more than we heard this morning. I look around and I see some of the pictures, and I only knew Kathy for about 12 years. Some of you have known, them, known her all your lives. Some of you have known her at different spots with different hairs. I never knew her hair was so dark, actually. <laughs> she didn't look down on people. She encouraged people. She liked to be with people. I saw that in pictures standing beside most of you, if she wasn't taking the picture. <laughs> the love that she had for all of her family, her brothers and sisters, for each of you sitting here. I also seen how proud she is of each of you. Because there's a lot of stories that were told a lot of time shared. Keep sharing. Keep being together and experiencing the gift of family. For it is a treasure. It is something to be held on to. It is something to share in that blessing, to pass on from generation to generation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the giver of life. You are the one who has blessed us with life. You have made us into families. You have blessed us with friends. Lord, no matter what we experience this day, our hearts are heavy because of the great love that you have blessed us with, a love that has changed each of our lives, a love that is continuing to change our lives. Lord, help us to remember Kathy's words, her smirks, her loves. Help us to allow the life that she nurtured, whether it was around a dinner table, on a porch, in a flower bed, on a sports field. driving around in a car. Lord, help us to appreciate each blessing and to live in the fullness of life that you have promised us. Lord, you have taught us that each day is a treasure. Help us to live each day to the fullest. Do not be afraid to make that phone call, to drop by and say hi, to experience the fullness of the blessings that you have for each of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, Helena and Willoughby will sing Beyond the Sunset.
Thank you, ladies. It is not by our great accomplishments that we're able to enter in to God's glory. It is by God's grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, that we can trust in his faithfulness and his promises to receive our sister Kathy to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. Let us pray. Holy God, you have made us each unique. You have made us each individuals. Lord, I pray that you would continue to be with each of us here. Lord, we pray that you would fill us with your faithfulness to walk with you each and every day. Lord, help us to experience the fullness of your as you comfort us in these times of grieving. For Lord, it is you who have given us the gift of life, the gift of family, the treasured people that we hold in our hearts. It is through your redeeming love that you have given us new life in Christ. Lord, we entrust Kathy to your merciful keeping, placing our faith in Christ our Lord, who died and rose again to save us, and who now lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Before we go, everyone is invited downstairs for luncheon uh, and to continue on in a time of sharing memories. I'd also ask, and again, on to ask that we continue to keep each of the family members in our prayers. Prayer is powerful, it is important, but also I invite us to remember to support each other. I put this out here because sometimes we all need someone to lean on. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to offer. As we see here, there's a great deal, great number of people who are important, who love Kathy. We're here to help. Before we go downstairs, because if we try, we wait until we get downstairs, the food's going, we're going to miss it. <laughs> so let us pray before we go downstairs. Mm-hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each person here. We thank you for the many times that Kathy has helped out, whether serving downstairs, whether fixing something that needs to be sowed, whether it's creating something, whether it's preparing the communion table, whether it's helping out with Sunday school or with the ladies group. Lord, we pray for your blessing. We pray for your blessing on this time, on each of us, and on this food that we're about to partake in. Lord, we thank you for the many hands that have helped to prepare it. We thank you for the many people who have helped to make today a special day, a day of remembrance, a day when we give thanks to God for Kathy's life. Lord, we thank you for the many, many people who have helped along this long journey. But it is a journey that has been a treasured time together. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Bye. 